Hey YouTube, welcome back to Mom's channel. Today I have the Singer M3220 that we're gonna go over. First we're gonna do an overview of what comes with the machine and then I will show you how to wind a bobbin and load the bobbin and load the top thread. Okay, I'll put timestamps down in the description so if you don't want to listen to all the overview, um, you can skip right to what you want to what you want to see. So first of all, um, this is the uh, Singer M3220. Let's see what all comes in the box. You get the machine. You have the foot pedal, which is your gas, your motion maker. Um, the accessories that come with it are. Let's see if I can go in per uh, in order. The all-purpose foot is already on the machine. You have a zipper foot which is for getting close in usually on a zipper but there are other applications. Um, we have a buttonhole foot. This is what's going to let you make your buttonhole and from looking you know when I when I see this kind of a buttonhole foot you can adjust it you put your button right in here and then clamp it down and it's going to make the buttonhole that fits your button so that's pretty cool um let's see we have a button sewing foot you can put this on and put your button under here and it will hold your button still while you sew it on so that's pretty cool as well um, let's see what's next. You have a seam ripper and a brush. The brush is for cleaning out lint and dust and all. And then if you open it, voila, you have the seam ripper. This is a very dangerous little tool. So if you have small kids around, please take this out of the machine and put it up somewhere so that you can find it, but they can't because I have hurt myself more with these things than I ever have with the needle or anything else. So please be aware this is not a toy. And for some reason, dogs, if they find it, they love to chew on this one particular thing. So please put this up. Um, next, this is an edge guide for quilting. You can mount it under here and I'll show you that. But, um, your plate down here has little notches that show you how far away from the needle you are, like if you're a half an inch or a quarter of an inch or five-eighths of an inch. But sometimes when you're quilting, you want to get really far away, but you want to stay straight. So this is all this is. It just extends your guides so that you can be, you know, two to three inches away from your other seam and still be straight. So you did that. Um, you get a package of needles, extra needles. I think there are three in here. Yes, there are. And if you're wanting to buy some extra needles, I have a video on how to pick the correct needle. So I will also put a link to that in the description. You can check that out. Um, spool holders. We get two different ones. You get this really tiny one here and then you get the big one depending on the size of your spool you just want to cover the end up so if you're using a big spool you're not going to use this because you want to use this one but if you're using just a little spool you can stick this in there and it'll hold your spool this one's for the bigger spools of thread we have four bobbins there's three in the package there's one already in here that's empty as well. Sometimes they have thread on them, sometimes they don't. So if it does, just take it out. Um, this is a screwdriver that fits a lot of the different screws that you'll be wanting to adjust. So be sure and keep up with that. That's one of the most important things. Now you have a darning foot cover and you'll use this when you sew on buttons or anytime you're doing something that you don't want the fabric to move. Under here are feed dogs that if you look under there, those little um, jagged edge teeth looking things, those pull the fabric through as you're sewing. That's what makes it keep on going backwards so you can sew forwards. But sometimes you don't want that fabric to move. Some machines have feed dogs you can just drop. This one does not, so you're just going to be covering it up with 
your darning plate that will just snap right under here whenever you need to use it. Um, we have a second spool pin right here, which will go right up here. And you can use this if you want to do double needle sewing. So that's pretty cool. And then you have a little felt cover to put on here so that your thread isn't wobbling around as much. You also get this nifty little dust cover so you can cover up your machine when you're not using it. And you have some paperwork that's going to show you how to operate your machine, which we'll look at in a minute. And the rest of it is just guidelines. Now, there is no book manual, at least there wasn't in my machine. So you can go to, and on this paper, it tells you the web address. Yeah, manuals at singer.com. You can go there and download the manual. I printed off some of it, not all of it, because it had quite a lot of pages. But um, So we'll be looking through this. Now, let's just look at some of the things on your machine before we get started. This is your reverse lever. So if you want to go in reverse, you'll hold that down and then let it back up when you're done. Um, this is a little tool compartment. You can slide it off just like that. And then over here on this side, you can open that up so you can keep your accessories in here if you want to so you don't lose them. Now when you take this off, that's what creates the free arms. If you're doing a sleeve or something that you need to fit around the arm, this makes it a little bit smaller. Um, and it just slip, slips right back on there. So, let me get some thread and get it plugged in, and we'll see how to wind a bobbin and load the bobbin, okay? Okay, let's see if we can wind a bobbin. First, about the thread. This machine has a horizontal spool thread holder as well as a vertical. When you use horizontal spools, you normally, or it's recommended that you use this cross-wound thread, and I... I think I might be able to get to see, but the thread kind of crisscrosses. It's not just rolled right on top of each other. That's called a stacked thread. You use stacked threads on a vertical and crosswound threads on a horizontal. And I have a video about this. I'll also drop a link to that in the description. So, but I cannot stress the importance of thread. So many times I've had trouble with machines and it's been because of the thread I was using. So if you're having tension troubles and you've tried a new needle, you've adjusted your tension, you've tried it re-threaded, try different thread. You might be surprised at what a difference it makes. Now, depending on the size of the end of your spool, if you see here I have two different ones, this size spool will use this thread holder Whereas this size spool, you would want to use the little one in there. When you put it on the holder, you would just slip this on here. Well, let me just show you. See, that will fit right on there and hold your thread steady. But since white thread doesn't show up very good, I'm going to go with the larger red. Now, my thread is coming off of the back coming over and off of the back so I'm going to slip it on here and put my holder on okay now we're set there next we need one of your bobbins now if you can see this little bobbin has a hole in it right here and that's where we're gonna thread it is right through there so hold on to this for a second and let's get it going down the path you see this little purple diagram right here? That is the path for the bobbin. So it says step number one. Mm -hmm. Step number one is this little metal guide right here. So hold your thread and just slip it right under there. And now it's in that guide. Next, we're going to come here to this little round one. If you look at the guide, it tells you to come down on this side first 
and I usually have to hold it right here to get a little bit of tension, wrap around this bottom, and then come around to the top, okay? And it makes a little crisscross there when you get it properly done. So, next we're going to come over here. Now, when we get to this point, we're going to need the thread in our bobbin. So, what you want to do is take the end of your thread. Now, you're going to go in. You're only going to use, you see there's a hole on the bottom and a hole on the top. You only use one. It doesn't matter which one. So, go right in. Right there. And it comes right out the top. So you see, I only have it threaded through one of them, okay? It's only threaded in one. And then holding the top up, I'm going to come over here and snap it down and then pull it up. Now, don't cut this yet. So we're going to slip this over to the right till you hear the click. That's what engages your bobbin. So now I'll turn the machine on. There's a little switch. Let me see if I can show you that. Over here where you plug it in. Here it is. There's your on off switch. Okay. So if the light is on, the machine is on, and your fingers are away from the needle. Now anytime I'm fiddling around making these um, videos, you can see I have my foot pedal up here on the counter because if you push this foot pedal and your finger is under this needle, it will sew your finger. There is no sensor or anything else. You just have to be careful. If you're fiddling around with your machine, pick your foot pedal up and put it up on the counter beside you so that you don't accidentally slide your foot over it while your finger is somewhere it shouldn't be. Okay. We are ready to wind the bobbin. So hold this up and give it a little bit of gas. Just like that. Now, at this point, you can stop and you can clip this tail off so it won't get in the way. This little deal over here is your bobbin stopper. That's what's going to stop it when it's full. You do not have to wind until it's full, though. You can stop. If you just have a little project and you just need half of a bobbin, you can stop at any point. So let's start winding this. And you'll want to check to be sure that your bobbin is winding fairly evenly. Now, mine looks a little bit heavy on the bottom, so I'm just going to snug it down a little bit. You can also guide it with your finger just up and down a little bit if you need to most of them want, will kind of even out okay now it's getting close to full i see it pressing against this so watch what happens when it gets all the way full see it just stops winding so there's nothing wrong with your machine it's just that your bobbin is full and like I said, you don't have to fill it up. So once it gets there, push it back to the left and snip off your thread. And there's your bobbin. Now it actually is possible to loosen this screw and turn this if for some reason you wanted to make it even fuller than it is. I've never done that myself. And I just found out that was possible. But um, anyway, that is, that is something you can do should you be inclined. So now, let's see if we can get this bobbin put into the bobbin compartment. Okay, here's our bobbin compartment. To release the top, you're going to pull that little gadget over to the right, and that'll flip up, and then you can just slip that out. Now, there was already a bobbin in here, so we'll just lift it out. And now it's time to put ours in. When you put your bobbin in, you want the bobbin thread rolling off of the top like this okay and you're going to drop it in there now pull your thread slightly to the right you want to come under this little gray plastic thing there, that guide and then pull it all the way to the left 
and you're going to come back around. Now you should feel some tension on it at this point because what has happened is there is a there's a little slit right down in here and this guide helps make sure that your thread goes down into that little slit. So pull it carefully so that you don't doesn't, it doesn't bypass that. Then you can come around. You see right here there's a thread cutter so if you come over and pull it, it's going to snip your thread off at the perfect length for you to begin sewing. Okay. Then you'll want to take this, put it right back in there where it was and push it down. Okay. Bob and loaded. Now let's do that thread. Okay, so this was the threading that we had when we were doing the bobbin. So you're going to want to unthread that, pull that out, and let's start all over because it's a different, a little bit different thread path on this. So first, we're going to hit this number one path, just like we did with the bobbin. Hold it in both hands and flick it right under there. Okay, now we're following the gray lines this time. So the first thing is to come over here to this hook. You see how it's open on the back? So you're going to come around to the back and then just slide it through the hook. Now, at this point, I want you to stop and be sure that your presser foot is in the raised position. This is your presser foot. And in order to raise and lower it, there is a lever around here on the back of your machine. So when it's down, your presser foot's down. When it's up, your presser foot's up. You want to raise that when you start to thread because inside here are your tension discs. They're right down in there. And what they do is they squeeze together and how hard they squeeze depends on your tension that's set. So if they are, if the needle is engaged or the presser foot is down, then it's going to be squeezed. And if you lay the thread down in there, it may not get in between those discs just right. So make sure that your presser foot is up at this point. Now, we're just going to bring the thread right down in here easily. You see right here where it's got the number four and it looks like a U-turn? That's what we're gonna do. We're fixing to make a U-turn all the way up to the top, keeping to the right side. This little metal thing sticking out here is your take-up lever. And you need to be sure that it's sticking up. If it is not sticking up, that means your needle is not in the uppermost position. So what you're gonna do now is you come over here to your hand wheel and you're going to turn it. Now watch what happens to the take-up lever as I turn it. You see how it disappears down in there? But if I just keep turning, see it comes back up. So you wanna be sure that you're in the up position. Just turn the wheel towards you. They even have little arrows. And this notch should be pretty close to the top up there, okay? That'll let you know that you're in the topmost position. So once you get up here, you're going to slide around. Let me get back in a better position. You're gonna bring your thread back over to the left and into this take-up lever. Now, you should feel a little tug, and you want your thread to be in this hole. There's a little metal guide right here. Sometimes you have to pull kind of hard to get it all the way down into the little hole, get it past that, that guide that keeps it from coming out. So now, we're going to just go straight down again and we're at the number six. Okay, so let me get a better position and we'll look at how to thread the needle. Okay, that's better. So now that we have our thread, we just went down the number six. The first thing to do is get it behind this. So I'm just going to hold it horizontally and then slip it down behind that, okay? The next guide that we want to hit is this one right here. We need to go in between this needle clamp bar up here and this little thin metal guide. So once again, I hold my thread horizontally and slip it right through there and then bring it down at the back 
and come to the front. Okay? And now all we need to do is go through the needle. There is a little hole in your needle right there from front to back. And at this point, you can let your presser foot down so that you'll have some tension. And usually by the time I get it threaded, my thread is a little bit worn on the end, so I make a new cut. That way I have a nice um, sharp edge to try to thread through this needle. And then you're just going to push it right through that hole. Front to back. Then there's the end of it over there. So I'm going to pull that off to my left. Oops. And the needle is threaded. And you see if I pull on it, there's a good bit of tension on that. Watch what happens if I lift the foot. Less tension. Okay. So, now the next thing to do before you start sewing is to pull up your bobbin thread. What you want to do is hold on hold the thread out to this side. You're not pulling on it, you're just holding it firmly. So you're going to hold this. With your right hand, turn the hand wheel towards you until the needle goes down into the bobbin compartment and then comes back up. Sometimes it takes more than once. We caught it that time. And you're going to pull and there came See, here's my bobbin thread coming out now. So I have needle thread up here, bobbin thread out here, and if you want to, you can pull it out just a little bit more. I usually do. And then I lift up my foot and I tuck both threads under the foot. Okay? So let's see if we can run a stitch. I will do a follow-up video that goes a little more in depth about all your stitches and whatever. But for now, I know you're probably anxious just to at least sew something. So let me just briefly go over this. First of all, your tension dial is up here and when it comes, it's probably on the four. If you roll that dial, you see that there's a line between the three, four, and five. That's because that's the most common tension that you're gonna wanna use. Now you'll adjust it for different things later on, but for now just leave that on four. Over here is your stitch length, and there's a little uh, raised dot right here. It's kind of hard to see, but that tells you which stitch length you're on from zero to four. Four is going to be a much longer stitch, and uh, zero will be a more narrow stitch. Now if you look around here, you see the S2 and the S1. So what that is, you have, if you look down here on your stitch selector knob, you see like right here, there's three stitches or three diagrams all together. Only one is black, one is blue, and one is red. So if you have this knob up here on the zero through four, you are getting the black stitch. If you move it to the S2, you're getting the red stitch. And if you move it to the S1, you're going to get the blue stitch. So that's why you have three choices in one place. So we're going to go back to the, the black numbers about a four. And you can slide this all the way around. And depending on, like if I move it here, this is my zigzags. If I move it here, I get this strange looking zigzag, which is a stretch zigzag. So you can move this all the way around. And as long as this knob is on the zero to four, you are just getting the black stitches for each choice. Okay, so let's go back. I'm in between the three and the four. I'm going to turn this back around. Now the difference between this and this is just your needle position. In these choices, your needle is in the center position. And in these choices, your needle is off to the right. So we're going to do needle uh, in center position. I have a stitch length between three and four. My tension is set to four. So let's see how it sews. I have my thread all done. So here's a little piece of fabric. We're just going to slip it in here and then let the foot down. 
and I like to hold my thread with my left hand. That keeps it from getting sucked back under there. I also like to turn my hand wheel towards me just enough to put that needle in the fabric before I get started. Now the reason I'm holding this is just for the first couple of stitches. After that, you're fine. And there go your first stitches. If you want to go in reverse, you're going to hold this down. And it will go backwards. And then forwards again. And a lot of people like to do a reverse stitch at the beginning and ending of their straight stitches. It locks that seam, but that's entirely up to you. So that is the beginning lesson on the Singer M3220. Um, hit that subscribe button if you want to be notified when the rest of the videos start coming out. This is a really nice little machine. I love the um, horizontal spool holder. I'm also working on a major research project. I'm going to, within the next couple of weeks, release a video that uh, goes through every single machine that I have and um, compares them all, the good, the bad, the ugly, whatever. So be sure and hit that subscribe button if you want to be notified when that comes out. Thank y'all so much for watching and happy sewing!